These are samples that I've made for an upcoming uh, ruler work class in Colorado. And when I teach ruler work, what seems to be common is to use what's called the um, Versa tool by Handy Quilter. We can go into a lot of expense with rulers, and when we take a class, we tend to like to keep that expense a, a little bit more limited until we figure out what we've got. So the Versa tool, and I am not a representative for Handy Quilter at all, but I am a quilter who lives quilting and uses these. So you're getting it from someone that's not trying to sell something, but uh, share about a tool. So the Handy Quilter Versa tool actually allows you to get into the ruler work and do several different types of quilting with um, with a product where you can build up and decide if you like the quilting and start choosing of what you like and what tools you would like to buy to go with that. So I always use that um, and you can see how I started with something very plain and then I showed how it can be enhanced with more ruler work or with free motion quilting. So in doing that, I um, decided that I would just show some things that you could do with the Handy Quilter Versa tool because um, we tend to buy things and then we don't always know what to do with it. So I, I know a lot of people who have this tool and may or may not use it. And I thought it'd be fun to just kind of show some things that you could do with the VersaTool as a quilter that uses these products. Let's go see what we can do. All right, one way that you can use the VersaTool is in blocks as a whole with main designs. And when I do that, I address that block just like a whole cloth quilt and draw my horizontal, vertical, and diagonal lines. But I do want to say that there is a way to do that as well, especially block size. Uh, this is just a template where you can use chalk, uh, a pounce pad, but don't pounce it, <laughs> a pounce pad, and you can do those very quickly. So if you wanna do independent block designs, you can do that with a template. This one is um, from Designs with Lines, but I've seen them all over the place. Okay, let's use it now. All right, so the Versa tool has um, on this curve, this is the what we're going to be using first is this curve. And there is a horizontal line here and a vertical line here that I'm looking at. And I'm going to line those up on the center lines that I drew. Then I can go ahead and put my ruler foot, you do need a ruler foot to do ruler work. I'll put my ruler foot against that and it should be on that horizontal line. And I'll bring my threads up. Okay. Then when I do do ruler work, and these aren't going to look good, but that's how much I've used them in the past, I do use my machiners. So I still keep those, and I love those when I'm doing ruler work. So I've got the Versa tool right up against that. I'm going to make sure my horizontal line, the other side, is on, the, on that line. And then you can do this several different ways. You can start going around right now you can turn your fabric so that you're always coming down which is easy to do too just for the sake of time i'm going to leave it like this i'm going to take a stitch and make sure that i'm my machine says i'm good and then i'll go ahead and go up i've just got my hand nice and steady on that as i approach the center at whatever point i'm comfortable i can switch hands then i'm guiding that fabric over until I stop at this side. So this is a bigger piece of fabric. I've got it laying in my lap too, and that's why I did that. Now I'll go ahead and rotate that VersaTool and line up those lines again. And my lines aren't, oh, there we go. My fabric was just off a little bit. And when I line them all up, then I should be able to go around, but sometime with humanity, uh, we're not quite right, so I'm going to watch it as I come around and make sure I connect with those other stitches. Ready? A 
looks pretty good. Yep. And I can use free motion to make it work. Now, you notice that I kind of had to rotate like this with my hands. It really does work best. And if I was doing this by myself, I would have changed it. And we could have done it where we used the ruler like this and came down. And I just wanted to show you both ways. So it does work better coming down and then going up. But our mind tends to think like this, so I wanted to show that too. I usually go over some of my previous stitches, and I'll end that. Now, we'll add to that, and I'm just going to go to the right-hand side. My mind thinks like that. And let's use that same curve. I'm just going to move that to make some cross hatching in that circle. So I'm going to mark, for the sake of time, I won't make it too long. I'm gonna mark uh, every three quarters of an inch. So there's no markings on this portion for this. Uh, there are some things we could do, but we're gonna go ahead and just make a tick mark. Let's say every three quarters of an inch. And I don't know if that'll bring us right to the end of the circle or not, but it won't matter. Okay, and the last one's right here. And I probably won't do that one, but we'll mark it for a tick mark for right now. And then while we're here, we're just going to do the um, vertical side as well. So I'm marking from the very edge of my circle, and then I'm going on over every... Um, three quarters of an inch just because I don't want it too fat to where you can't see what we're doing and I don't want it too narrow to where it's going to take forever and that is right to it so I probably won't do that as the one that I showed okay obviously if you were really doing this on a quilt you'd want to make sure your dimensions uh, gave a good finish on your circles okay I'm going to line the versatile up where this line going right up the middle of it right there is on the horizontal line we drew. And then we'll like make the whole way across as far as it goes anyway. Okay, then we're gonna come over to the corner of the circle. And actually what I'll do is I'll go in um, a hole from the previous stitching, pull up my threads. This is just me. You can bury your threads, do it however you want, but I don't wanna have to do that. So I'm going to just take a few stitches freehand over to the versatile. Make sure, so the edge of it is gonna be on the line that we drew. So these are actually gonna be an inch apart and that's fine. Okay, I'm at the versatile. I'm gonna come down to the other side. Really easy when you're coming down. I'm gonna cut off my stitches. Then I'm going to, uh, personally, I'm going to freehand around this circle a little bit. And my stitches are going to be about an inch apart. Three quarters, well, actually three quarters of an inch apart. I'm going to move down a bit. And I'm going to get that ruler back on that line and move it up to the next mark I made so that I'll know when I'm there. Now I went too far, so I'll go back to that ruler and then I'll go back up. Okay. Then I'll move up. And I moved my ruler a little bit, paying attention to other things. And that in the end won't hurt. Okay, I'm going to move up to the next one. Make sure your ruler's even the whole way doing all kinds of stuff and not paying attention. Okay, I'm going to go back to where it was. Come on down. And I'll work that all the way across, and then we'll do the other side. All right, so I'm up at the top, and that's as far as I'm going to be able to go across. Now, before I talk about the rest of this, I do want to say I'm working with horizontal and vertical. You can also work with diagonals if you like. Um, with the markings that you made. So that doesn't matter. I'm just wanting to show you what you can do with the versatile. 
Obviously, it would be with circles no bigger than this because that's as big as it can go. Now that I'm at the top, I'm going to stitch around a little bit so that I can do um, the other markings. So I'm, I have my marking on that horizontal line. I'm going to bring the versatile down to where the edge of it touches that. I'll go right back and then I'll go across. Now, like I said, you do want to plan out your cross hatching. I didn't plan this out. I would have done it more narrow. I just want to show you. Okay, we'll move down until that white line touches the tick mark I made. Well, I'll go back a little bit. And after a while, you get used to how far you need to go. And remember, ruler work doesn't have to be fast. I'll go all the way across now, and then we'll take a look at that. So there's kind of what we're going to look like with cross hatching. Again, on something small like this, I probably would go about an a quarter of an inch no more than a half an inch apart so all right now let's just have some fun with how we might use this little square that we've got on it now there's lots of ways we can use that in piecing but let's just have fun since we're doing the center mark I'm going to use the diagonal that I made and put the my needle in right down on that diagonal and bring my bobbin thread up then I'm going to take that square that's on the versatile and have some fun. So I want the point of that to be right on the uh, vertical line. Then I want, um, then this is automatically going to be, um, whoops, right on the vertical horizontal line or vertical line there we go um, and that will dictate where I'm gonna be at on the side here then I want to adjust the other side so I'm about a quarter of an inch away um, it doesn't have to be perfect make sure that you don't um... and we'll go over and do one more it out and I'll show that to you. I won't end my stitches. So my plan is to do a few posts um, using this versatile. If you enjoyed this and would like to see more, I would like to know. Um, if it's not helpful, then of course I don't want to do it. But um, there we have a square and a square that you could put in a quilt block. You can do some stitching inside of these and have a lot of fun. So that's